Welcome to At The Bell with Derry Poppy Roland. Today I have a very special guest. We're very happy to have the Honorable Mr. Larry Heiser Sr. with us today. We are very, um, have a whole lot to discuss and talk about boxing and his, his upcoming in boxing and his as the commissioner from the boxing as a boxer to the commissioner. Can I have a round of applause for Mr. Larry Heiser Sr.? Mr. Hazard, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Man, I'm real, I'm real good. honored and thankful that you decided to come on and sit down with me and talk some of this, man. Tell me some of your history, man, how you started as a boxer, you know, and work all the way up to the commission. Well, well, well my story is really not that much different from your story and all the guys, you know, hanging out in the streets as youngsters growing up in Elizabeth, Newark, you know, the inner city, the inner city youngster who takes an interest in boxing. Um, started for me back in 1957. Mm. It's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, I found my way into a little small gymnasium in the uh, Hayes Homes Projects, mm, 17th Avenue, right across the street. Actually, it was right across the street from where the uh, Newark disturbances started, the 4th Precinct. Mm -hmm. It's right across the street from from the uh, Duca's AC. Well, the boxing gym. The gym was the Duca's AC. We, mm -hmm. we uh, were in the basement of 45 17th Avenue. And uh, we had a little ring down there and a couple of bags and speed bag and a mirror on the wall, mm -hmm. you know. You walk into any, any of the gyms in the inner cities today, you see replicas of the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. So I found an interest. In, in, in the sport. And, and you know, growing up, growing up during the times when I grew up, you know, uh, boxing was almost, or fighting was almost a requirement. Mm, definitely, you know, definitely. Uh, to be able to navigate the streets because the streets were pretty rough back then. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the guys that were in the gym training and the word gets out that, you know, guys are training and learning how to handle themselves. You, we, we pretty much could get around the neighborhoods and get around the city without any problems. So that was a great incentive also, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, it was no different. Uh, I started out training uh, at the Dukas. I was 13 years old. After a couple of years, uh, maybe a year or two, um, I started in competition. Back in those days, they didn't have like it, the structure for amateur boxing back then mm -hmm. was not like it is now. You didn't have USA boxing. Okay. Yeah, it was a AAU, Amateur Athletic Union, and competition was very simple. You know, you didn't have the young age groups. When you became 16 years old, mm -hmm. you could box. And, you know, you had to be 16 but you, then you fought everybody. I remember that. You know, there was no separation of age groups and all that because, and that's a great thing that boxing has today because, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the younger guys like myself, I got beat up quite a bit until mm -hmm. I started maturing, you know, as a youngster. You know, I put my age up. Me and Lloyd Marshall, you remember mm -hmm. Lloyd Marshall? We put our age up. We were like 14 years old. We jumped up like two years mm -hmm. to, to compete. I tried that, but they couldn't. It's not, it's not a good idea. It wasn't, <laughs> I tried it at 15. Well, well, it, it, it's really not a good idea. I don't recommend it. Uh, some guys do well, some don't. Yeah. I didn't do real well. Lloyd did very well, but yeah. I didn't do real well. Mm -hmm. But after a year or two, you know, I started to mature a little bit. Then I started getting into that flow mm -hmm. because I could handle it. I was a little more mature, a little stronger, and I can compete, you know, on a more even keel with the older guys. Right. And so... That led, that led to a couple of um, Golden Glove championships. Right. You know, and um, uh, you know, I did well, and my interest in the sport was was very good at that time at the amateur level. But after about four or five years, I realized that um, I probably would never be a world champion. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, you know, if I had to make a decision, you know, if I couldn't be a world champion and I really was honest with myself, yeah. you know, I didn't think that I really wanted to make that type of commitment with 
also with some of the fighters that were out <laughs> during that time. I just didn't feel that uh, I wanted to go on. So, so I left. I left the. Uh, I left the boxing uh, for a while, and then um, you know I became a teenage dad. You know, and okay. I got married young. I was 18 years old. So I started a family, and so then the work world came. Right. So I started working. Um, I didn't go to college right away. Uh, when I graduated from high school, I didn't go to college right away. I be started a family and I started uh, working. Um, so I worked, you know, I worked, uh, I drove a fork truck mm -hmm. um, at a place called Hyatt Roller Bearings. It was in Clark, New Jersey. Um, I drove the fork truck on the midnight shift for about eight or nine years. And, you know, about after about three or four years of doing that, I, I was motivated to, I always wanted to go to college. Excuse me, do you think that, I want to do this before, I, I didn't want to forget this question, sorry for interrupting you, but do you think that what you learned from boxing helped you with being a father and wanting to go to work and being strong? Do you think the characteristics with, with what it takes to be a good boxer and dedicated by learning that, do you think that kind of helped you along going into fatherhood and working and being responsible and taking care of things. Yeah, absolutely. Boxing boxing gave me that um, discipline. You know, I was well disciplined coming out of the out of the house, you know, my mother right. and my family. I was very lucky mm -hmm. to have that extended family, okay, but still in all, you know, as a youngster growing up in the inner cities, you still when you leave the house, you know, things change. And so with, with me, uh, my life was very simple. I started boxing, so it was leaving the house. I was in the gym every day, every day. Right. And the guys that, a lot of the guys that I would, would have been with in the streets, they were getting in trouble. Absolutely. And I wasn't getting in any trouble. So that, that sense of discipline, um, that sense of dedication and, mm -hmm. and taking care of one's responsibilities, that was all being ingrained and being reinforced, absolutely. That's you know, I see, because I don't want to take credit away from my mother. Mm -hmm. All of this now was really like reinforcing mm -hmm. all of the disciplinary concepts that she was driving home, okay. and it helped her. And so she used that as a vehicle also. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't behave, if I didn't go to school, get my work done, couldn't go to I, the gym. I had the same thing. With you my see what parents, I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. they you were smart. Go to the gym, you better do your homework first. Yeah. And you see, and what going. happens? The maturing, the maturation process kicks in mm -hmm. as you start to get older. Before you know it, you're 16, you're 17, you're 18. Now your adulthood, you start to understand things a little Absolutely. bit better. The brain starts to develop yeah. a little bit more and you understand it. The discipline. Right. See, and now you're into adulthood. You know what responsibility is all about. Mm -hmm. You know what being on time. Being, you got to be here. You got to be to work. You got to prepare. You, you got to be prepared. You got a family, and other people are dependent upon you. Mm -hmm. See, that's the other thing. Other people are depending upon you now mm -hmm. for their survival and well-being. So and that all comes from, you know, the boxing. Right. That's why I wanted to not miss that opportunity of sharing that because I had the same thing. The boxing helped me and you were a role model in the community. And so we are we growing up in my era or even even older than me were looking up to you. And if I talk about our history, you know, I believe I was thirteen and you were the referee at um Shabazz High School, you know, when I had a fight in Shabazz. Um so what got you from the job to the working parent to taking care of that. And when did you decide, decide to become a referee? Well, you know, it, it, it happened like this. I came out, you know, I had fought in the Golden Gloves out in the Elizabeth Armory. Oh, yeah, I remember those. So, those. you know, I started going to the, I would go to the fights. Mm -hmm. So I went out to the Golden Gloves one night. And it seems like it was old homecoming night because all, a lot of the guys that was, you know, came along mm -hmm. with me, we were all, you know, it was like a reunion. We were sitting around laughing and kidding, and we're looking at the fights. And like everybody else, we're critical of the officiating. Right, right. And there was a referee that was, was working, 
And I was like, being, oh man, this guy don't know what he's doing, you know, <laughs> like everybody else, right, right. you know. And you remember Mike Sarno? You remember Sarno. Mike Sarno oh, remember and Joe yeah, Levis? You remember Mike. Mikey? I know Mike. I know Mike. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So Mikey always laugh and talk with the guy. So he came over, he saw us. So I said, hey, Mikey, where you get this ref from, man? This guy don't know what he's doing. Oh, wow. So Mikey said to me, hey, you think you could do better? I said, I know I could do better. Wow. So he said, really? I said, yeah, man. I said, give me some sneakers. I was ready to get in there now, right? <laughs> so he said, I tell you what. He said, if you're really serious, he said, give me, a, give me your name. Let me, give me your phone number and everything. So and he said, go ahead, Larry, give it to him. You know, all the guys, give wow. it to him. So I gave it to him. I didn't think no more about it. You know what I mean? I didn't think no more about it. So um, I ran into, I, I can't remember who it was, but I ran into one of the guys on the street yeah. who was still you know, involved with the kids with boxing. I said, hey, Larry, man, Mikey has been trying to reach you. I said, I gave him my number. You know, I never got no call. He said, man, he's been asking what, what you know about you. So I said, okay. Um, tell him I'll be out to the Golden Gloves n next week, right? Mm -hmm. So I went back out there, and I said, hey, you know how Mikey was. Yeah, yeah, when we yeah. started talking again, I said, you really serious? He said, yeah. He said, listen, he said, be at Irvington High School, mm -hmm. okay? Whenever it was, yeah. like a week later, come to Irvington High School, bring a pair of sneakers. He said, that's all you need right now. Just bring a pair of sneakers, and a nice, you know, shirt, you know, put on a nice white shirt uh -huh. and some dark pants. And so I took him up. I went up to Irvington High School uh -huh. about a week or two later. <clears throat> and I saw him. He said, okay, just sit over there. I'm sitting over there. Put your sneakers on and everything. Sneakers. <laughs> he said, I mean, you're going to go in there and do a fight. He told Joe's going to put you in. So toward the end of the night, you know, they were down to the last couple of bouts. They put me up there. Man, I was nervous as all. Hell, you know what I mean? It's okay now to go in there and fight, up. but not referee. You gotta fight. put up now and shut up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so I went in there, and I really didn't know a lot about the rules, but nothing out of the ordinary happened. You know, I broke the fighters up, and I, right, right, you know, did. Right, right. And so um, when I came back out, he said, "You know, you did pretty good." He said, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a schedule. I want you to come around." Put you in a little bit, you judge, you know, and that was the beginning. Wow. That was the beginning. Wow. Because what I also remember is you became one of the best referees in, in amateur boxing and it made the sport a lot safer for us. Because later after that 13 year old introduction to me and you, I ran into you again out in, um, I believe, remember Eddie Johnson? I had, Mad Dog. Yeah, Mad, Mad Dog. Dog. He had a, a, a um, a fight with Brooklyn versus Patterson, and he called Patterson. me to represent okay. Patterson. Okay. And in the locker room, I remember you and I were sitting and talking, and I might have been maybe 14, 15 years old, and you said to me, like, you know, you got a lot of talent and a lot of skills that if you, if you stay away from drugs and if you keep yourself clean, you can go real far in boxing and in life. Now, you gave me that, and I can't even tell you how much, how many young kids that I gave the same exact speech to, speech to over and over again. So it passed down from you, but through me, I was doing it through you. Each one teach one. Each one teach one. That's it. And and, and I saw you again, I saw you again um, in Yardsville. Yes. When you was talking about the 16 thing, I'm finally 16 now. And Betty from the A Street Gym, she wanted me to represent Newark down in Yardsville. And, um, you referee, I remember you coming over to me as you checking me before the fight and said, oh, you all grown up now. And I was 16, and that was in Yardsville. So That so, was when we had the prison thing going. Yeah, the, the prison. prison. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, was the referee was, in Yardsville, yeah, that was man, good, and man. I remember that. That was real good. And the boxing was really good in those days. I mean, we was doing a lot yeah, of, a yeah, lot of yeah, things boxing. for the youth in the city. You know, um, yeah. I mean, we really, really want to try to get that back there. What we do here, we train a lot of kids here, trying to get them off the street, man, trying to give the same thing that was given to us. And and, and I'm giving back what you gave me, I give them. So we, and we, God, we, we, God will keep blessing you, man. You're, you're you know, still doing it. You, you pour know? that back into the kids, man, and, and mm -hmm. try to be an example for them. Absolutely. You know, try to be an example for them. And you got their attention. Mm -hmm. See, that's the whole thing, it's the attention. 
a lot of the youngsters, if you can't get their attention, then you can't teach them. Yeah, yeah, but this, yeah. You get them here, you got their attention. Now yeah. you can give them more than just the physical part. Right. That's what you got to remember. You know, because everybody, yeah, everybody's not going to be a world champion. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so you, you, you use this, you got a captive audience here. Mm -hmm. But you will be able to, and you got the experience, and I know Hakeem and all, all the rest of the guys, you got that experience. Mm -hmm. You got that eye. You know the kid that might have the potential. Right. And you know the other kids that really ain't got uh, going, but it's still good for them. Absolutely. You know, it's teaching them helpful living. You're keeping them away from the guys in the street, the drugs, yep. the alcohol, the gangs. You know, you got a lot of challenge, man. You got a lot of opposition out there. Absolutely. You know, and that's why, you know, you guys don't really receive enough credit because you don't get paid for this. Mm -hmm. You know, when I say get paid, you I, don't. I understand. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. You don't get paid. You know, so people a lot of times want to criticize, oh, this guy, he don't know what he's doing. But look, he's taking time with this kid. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and there's a shortage of adults mm -hmm. yeah, to deal yeah. with kids. Yeah. You know. I was lucky, man, not not to say that they were my father because I had a father who was active and very p p positive in my life. But a lot of them don't have that. That's right. You know, a lot of them, you know, the coaches, you know, you all they got. And so I, I'm giving back what I see to give back to that was given to me. Like I said, even though I had a dad, I had so many other outside dads. Yeah, you know, and, you know. and not only that, and see, and that's a good point that you make. Even though you had a dad, you had a lot of strong men outside of your dad who were like surrogate fathers. Absolutely. And they were reinforcing mm -hmm. what he was giving you. Absolutely. You know, and so, you know, the more strong men and women mm -hmm. that kids could be surrounded by, man, this is the recipe for success for them. Uh -huh. What do you think comparing now, though? You comparing boxing, what it is now compared to what it was then? I mean, is there any differences and so, adjustments we have to make? Well, okay, I'll, I'll since I'm, you know, since I'm so proud of what you guys are doing, I'll engage you in this conversation. Okay. Because I usually don't even talk about fighters today and fighters from eras past. Okay. Because I won't insult the eras past. Okay. okay. I, I really won't, man. Okay. You know, there's no comparison. You know, and let me take one weight division. I won't even start with the amateurs. I'm going to start with the pros and work backwards. Okay. Okay? You, you, t let's take the welterweight division. Uh -huh. Professional, the top welterweights in boxing today. I have not seen any welterweights in boxing that compare to Sugar Ray Leonard, mm -hmm. Roberto Duran, mm -hmm. Tommy Hearns, mm -hmm. Marvin Hagler, mm -hmm. who comes from Newark. You name me one that compares you, to anyone. Does that... Does that include the, the infamous Floyd Mayweather? Floyd Mayweather is the cream of the crop. Well, he's not fighting anymore, uh -huh. but he was the cream of the crop of okay. this generation, of uh -huh. this era. Uh -huh. But in my opinion, Floyd couldn't hold a candle to Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh -huh. Ain't no way, man. Mm. Come on, man. There's not, it's no way. I kind of agree with you, even though so many people would, would debate that against us. I agree being that, you know, the competition was so right and everybody was. And what I think caused that, just my opinion, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, um, is because they were fighting the best. You know, it wasn't no, like, let me build you up to being 10-0 and 0 or 20-0. and 0. Let me just get you bum, 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 and then give you a fight. I think back then it was, look, you 8-0, and 0, I'm 9-0, and 0, let's do it. You know, you, you, go, you go to the head of the class. You go to the head of the you class. You go to the head of the class. And see, back in the day when the best fought the best, right. and the best wanted to fight the best. Absolutely. Okay, I sit in a position where I watched it. I watched the erosion of the game. Uh-huh. And it hurts. Mm. It hurts because you got fighters who pull out because this guy's record is too good. Right, right. You know, that's something that the <laughs> managers and stuff, now you got the fighters telling the managers yeah. this guy's record. Yeah. Everybody wants to zero. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody wants to zero. And zero. it permeates on down through the industry. Oh. 
wow. you know, you got the promoters now who are trying to promote some guy. Uh -huh. You understand? And so they want to go out and cherry pick. You understand? Mm -hmm. And I had a I had a, a situation not long ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll tell you what I go through. I gotta I gotta prove these bouts. I know. I had a bout. The guy had the nerve, and I told him, "Don't <laughs> ever do this again. Don't ever insult me like this again." He sent me in a fighter. Okay, here's a fighter over here with a three and O record. Mm -hmm. He tried to match him against a guy who was three and 14. And of the 14 losses, he had been knocked out or TKO'd 11 straight times. Wow. <laughs> now you tell me how, is that not ridiculous? <laughs> That puts the R in ridiculous. You know, you know, I do know that that, is, that it could be real insulting. Well, I'm gonna thank, take this opportunity right now that you're on that to tell you how I felt when I turned professional at 18, and you were the commissioner at the time. But how I felt was that I felt safe. I felt that I was all right. I felt that I couldn't have to worry about it. Like Mr. Has it, you know, my relationship with him, he's not gonna let nothing happen to me. And it made me feel easier going pro and taking those fights on. I kind of felt like I was being protected, that nothing was going to happen to me. And that's the message. Mm -hmm. That's the message that I try to send to every fighter mm -hmm. that comes into this state. Right. Is that I'm going to protect you, mm -hmm. okay? But if you're going in there, don't look for no, don't look for no favors either. We're looking for competition. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to let you go in over your head either. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? And then, and then when I did think that I was going to get something special to me, right, I said, you know, I was trying to return to the ring after the eye injury. I don't know if you remember this, but I said, you know, I'm going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm clear my doctor said I can fight. He said, no, I'm not going to clear you unless my doctor said you can fight. So you were still protecting me, That's but right. I, I was feeling right. like, yo, I supposed to, you supposed to, no, yeah. it's me, man. Why you can't yeah, just clear me to I fight? Know. And, and I, he said. That's the way you supposed to feel, I guess. <laughs> like you know yeah, like, I mean? oh, this is me, man. You supposed to just say, okay, it's Bobby. But you said, no, 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 no. And you I'm wouldn't be saying look. the things that you're saying right now if I hadn't went the other way. No, no. So I, I, I felt that that was the way it should have went. That's right. You know, and, and I remember going to that doctor. Yeah, doctor, it was the surgery that I had to run, turn to the ring. He didn't know what it really was. So he was like, oh, no, I don't know. Because he didn't know what he didn't understand the surgery. But him and my doctor got on the phone. And then I was able to return to boxing, but I felt safe. And That's right. you know, you as a commissioner made me feel that way. That was that was very good. So, um, what my, what I wanted to talk about was what's going on with a lot of these young guys turning pro. Like I did it at 18, but I had like lots of amateur experience and lots of that. How do we deal with the young kids that's turning professional or making that jump? You know, and might not be qualified or or they got the manager problems. Like, how do we deal with, can we improve that? Like, can we help, you know, these these uh, young guys getting bad management, you know, you know, and they, they seem like they're just looking for me. Well, you know, that's always been a problem. I think that education is the key. Mm -hmm. You know, with these, like, like I said, you know, you, now you have, you have that opportunity Mm -hmm. See, you guys have that opportunity now to raise a whole new crop mm -hmm. of athletes, of fighters. Yeah. You can educate them. You've been in the business. You can, you can teach them about contracts. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can teach them about how to deal with managers and promoters. You had the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, it, the transition only also includes officials, though, correct? Because you got the officials, the amateur officials. They they, they got a protocol they got to make. Do the, do the fighters got a protocol they got to make in order to make the transition to the pros? Well, I mean, you know, they certainly have to, you know, show that they have amateur experience. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. Okay. You know, that's basically it. You just can't come off the street and become a professional fighter. Okay. But yeah. the, um, if there was some other way. A better way mm -hmm. you know we would try it but everybody that comes in what happens is in New Jersey at least yeah you know you lose a certain amount of fights you know I just say you can't you can't fight it 
Right. I know there's laws if you get knocked out, you got to wait a period of time, you know. Yeah, you know, there's time between bouts and things like yeah. that. That goes into another um, thing that I really wanted to talk to you about because I'm seeing a lot of celebrities, not celebrities, I know a lot of champions, a lot of great fighters, man, that I talk to now or that ain't really talking too good. Some made millions of dollars and still, you know, broke and still um, can't speak clearly and and the same thing with some of the others is there anything that has been done or anything you think we could do to try to like well uh, well less you know, than that you know again again i keep hopping back on education i guess that's because i was an educator mm -hmm. okay but that's the key man that's the key you know you talk about guys who made a lot of money and now they don't have any money right so right away it sounds good to talk about retirement plans for them and all that but these are independent contractors. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy who's in business as a plumber for himself, there's nobody, he has to manage his own money. Mm -hmm. Fighters are in business for themselves. Right. Okay, and you don't, you know, you don't fight often enough and, 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 and um, you know, there's, there's no way to monitor, to have somewhere where a certain amount of money is being taken out by some by the government or right, by right. some employer putting it away for you, uh -huh. like on a regular job, you're independent. Right. You and, have and to- Education will, will probably prevent the, the bad managers from from getting most of the money, you know, and- hey, Listen, when, when a fighter understands what he's, read the fine print. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys signed, okay, then the managers have beefs because you know, they give a, they give a guy so much money, and then they give him money and get him an apartment, and they got to pay his child support and all that kind of stuff. Now they come in, and they got a side to it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I mean? So it all comes down to education, man. Education and teaching. You know, you know, if you have to get a lawyer, if you could get a lawyer to negotiate you a contract, yeah, yeah. read that contract. Have that contract tilted towards you, not towards the manager, not towards the promoter. Right. You know what I mean? And then get you know when you start making that money, you understand. Get someone that understands money management. Mm -hmm. Get you somebody that a financial planner. Right, right. Be a professional, a real professional. You know, all of the all of the top fighters are not broke. That's right. That's right. And if you ask those guys, a lot of them did guys, really good. You're a lot right. of them did very good. A lot of them are very intelligent. You mm -hmm. look at some of these guys, and I don't start naming them. Yeah, but, but lifestyles come into effect too. You're right. Absolutely. absolutely lifestyle. Absolutely. You know, you get some kid, man, who's been poor all his life, mm -hmm. grew up in the projects or whatever. All of a sudden, he got a million dollars or two million dollars. Mm -hmm. It's hard to, you know, if you haven't taught him along the way, if right. you haven't cultivated him along the way, right, right. it's hard now to corral him. You understand? He'll yeah. tell you, man, this is my money. <laughs> yeah. That's what he tell you, this yeah, is my yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't use the right, the same terminology, <laughs> but you understand what I'm talking about. This is a great information that you're giving to a lot of the youth that hope to get to see this and, you can't, and learn you from can't, this. You can't top knowledge, education. Right. Okay? You can't top that. Mm -hmm. Because that's the way to go, man. That's the way to go. Knowledge is power. That's right. That's, that's right. power. And then you, you know, when you're making the money, mm -hmm. get you somebody, man, that knows how to manage money. Mm -hmm. Get you a lawyer. That's it. Get you, and you got somebody to watch him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's a lot that you gave to a lot of young fighters. Because my next conversation that I wanted to go on with you was like, what would you have to say or give to a young fighter that's, going into that direction now what would we do with them what would you give to the, the young fighters but you gave them so much right there anything else you want to give them besides that hey look other than that don't don't ever forget where you came from mm -hmm. you understand be a role model for the youngsters mm -hmm. and and that's being back. a good give that's back. and give back to your community and that's mm -hmm. being a good you know what that's being a good role model there's some, um, what I wanted to talk about now is here and now, like upcoming fights right now that we got going on. What's your take on um, the older fighters? Uh, they had a 
fight the other day with the Holyfield, and it's my understanding because of what happened to Holyfield, they canceled the Riddick Bow fight. What do you think about these uh, these older guys that's that's well over their prime and still competing on a level or trying to make money or is it about money or is it about the fame? Well, what is it that they still trying to do? Well, I don't think it's about the fame. It's not about the fame because they're already famous. Okay. You know what I mean? And the proof of that is the fact that they're doing it because if you're nobody, you wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. the promoters wouldn't have you doing it. They want the famous guys, mm -hmm. you know. And my personal opinion is that I don't like it, mm -hmm. okay? But I do understand that it's all about the Benjamins. Right, right, right. It's gotta be about the money. Okay. You know, that's the name of the game. And um, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea because these guys have long, you know, long ago, the skills are gone. Right. You know, now if it's an exhibition, uh -huh. See, there, 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 there's a play on words here with this stuff that's going on. What's an exhibition and what's for real? Right. You know, they start out saying, well, it's an exhibition. They're just going to, they're not going to try to hurt it. Roy Jones and, and Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Then they call it exhibition, right? It was supposed to be an exhibition. No, no, no decision and whatever. Uh -huh. And it went over well. Yeah. Because both those two guys are still kind of young for that group. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they're yeah. well conditioned. It didn't take too well. We thought it wouldn't take too many beatings. Okay. It didn't take a whole lot of shots, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But but the I Holy Field, Holy Field, and 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 that that didn't look right. I was a little mm -hmm. embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I was sad to see him uh, perform like that because he was like one of my idols. Also, he was a great fight. I looked up great, to him. Great fight. And 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 to see him go out like that, I didn't want to see that. You know. It did. It, it's not for me. To me. Mm -hmm. It's not good for the sport, certainly not good for the fighters. Right. You know, now, you always held Holyfield in high esteem. I still hold him in high esteem. Right. But it hurts you to see him go out like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that hurts. You know, I'd rather remember Evander Holyfield and some of those fights with Riddick Bowe. Absolutely. George Foreman. That's you know, you that's the warrior, that's the real that's deal, man. Very, you know. Not like it's that. It's kind of like, I, I didn't understand a lot of the older guys, you know, when, when you know, because Muhammad Ali was before me and I was young, but a lot of the older guys were so against Larry Holmes, you know, and Larry Holmes, you know, Fort Muhammad Ali, you know, seeing a lot of guys was like, oh, they stopped even liking Larry Holmes because of that, you know. And I remember yeah. those, those yeah. fights. And Larry, Larry, I don't think Larry, Larry didn't want to hurt Ali. I think he said that in the ring, in the fight, I think he was like, no, come on, <laughs> trying to cause the referee to stop, tell the referee to come stop it, stop it, yeah. Yeah, I think I think a lot of a lot of that with Ali was people on that was riding Ali's wagon. Yeah, yeah. That was pushing him in there. Uh -huh. I don't think that Larry really wanted to hurt him. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't even know if Larry really wanted to fight him. Right, right. You right. know, but they was, you know, once again, the, the money thing, man. And that's what the game is all about. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I, I, I just don't, I, I don't like to see it. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. We're going to try to do, carry on your legend, man, and what you're trying to do here. We got some kids. We're trying to keep off the street. We're trying to keep get everything where, give back what was given to us. And, you know, in the long haul, let it trickle down each one, teach one, like you said. Hey, man, I thank as long, you. I thank as, long you so as you, much. as long as you guys, man, are giving to these kids, you always have my support. Yeah, I must thank you again, you man, for everything you did for me in my life. Thank you for coming on the show. It was an awesome job, man. I really um, enjoy sitting down with you. Anything to say before we close, man? Well, I'm, I just want to say, man, and I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm very proud, uh, okay, because, uh, you know, I've interacted through the years with a lot of youngsters, man. You know, I was a teacher, I was a school principal. You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So interacting with young people and then boxing. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Who, I, I don't know, this is like a blessing, man, that I don't take for granted, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, uh, the last 30, 40 years, man, I, I haven't been working because it's not like a job. You know, yeah, it's not yeah, work, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah. And, you it's know, not working if you enjoy it. Yeah. I'm telling you, and as long as you can give to these kids, man, 
and try to straighten out as many of them as you can. Because there's nothing, there's nothing more pleasurable, man, and heartwarming than for you to bring in a rough kid, man, off the street mm -hmm. who wants to beat up the world, yeah. and then you cultivate him, man, and the next thing you know, you got him dressed up in a suit and a tie. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah. He uses some big words Share and words, going to school. You know? That's a beautiful thing, it man. Is. And it's it very is. possible. It is. And so I'm very proud of what you guys are doing, man. You know, it's, it's, just keep it up. It's, God is blessing you. There's so many things that I could uh, go on and talk to you more about it, man. So I want to know, man, is it possible maybe sometime later in the future I can have you on again? Yes. Because uh, I really, you know, so much I could really talk and get from you. And when you speak, everybody listens, man. Okay, and, uh, that's cool. You're just an awesome young, awesome man, and I thank you a whole lot. And I'm glad I got okay. to know you, man. All right? Okay, brother. Thank you very Thank much, you. brother. Appreciate it. Cool. This is At The Bell with Dark Poppy Roland. Like and share this so we can keep on bringing these interviews to you. Again, we have Mr. Honorable Larry Hazard Sr. Great job. Okay, baby. Great job. Appreciate you. Good.